All right, so this is surprise and a save. Uh, no disclosures. Um, our patient is a 82-year-old female with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, hypothyroidism, a remote history of breast cancer, proxismal AFib, um, who presented with progressive uh, worsening dyspnea on exertion and fatigue. Um, <clears throat> her aortic, uh, she has severe aortic stenosis with valve area of 0 0.3 and peak and mean gradient of 160 and 90 millimeters of mercury with a peak velocity over uh, six meter per second. Um, despite this, she had a preserved LV um, systolic function. She did have moderate MR to begin with, and uh, mild non-obstructive CAD uh, was found on uh, coronary angiography as uh, demonstrated in these uh, images. And here's one clip of her uh, aortic valve, which is um, very severely stenosed. So um, based on her age risk profile, we decided to proceed with uh, transfemoral TAVR, uh, which was performed after pre dilatation given heavy calcification. In the interest of time, I'm not showing you the CT images, but you can uh, appreciate here there's a heavy chunk of calcium, um, as noted here, and a, um, uh, I believe a 26 uh, S3 was implanted. Um, and you can see there is a waste here. And there was also mild uh, perivalvular uh, regurgitation, as noted in the bottom left panel, uh, for which a post dill was performed. Um, I'd like uh, to uh, bring your attention to this uh, image on the bottom right. Uh, look at this nose cone. This becomes relevant. Hope you can all appreciate the uh, sudden movement of the nose cone towards the end of the post dilatation there. So, uh, Immediately post TAVR uh, was a surprise, which was this echo density, which became visible here, flailing in the LVOT. Um, and this actually is an avulsed uh, papillary muscle head, um, which occurred after the post dilatation uh, of the TAVR valve. Uh, surprisingly, the mitral regurgitation was not severe, uh, at least not at this point. Here is the image demonstrating the degree of mitral regurgitation. And this uh, long axis uh, transgastric view clearly shows uh, an absent papillary muscle head here. That's the anterolateral uh, pap muscle. The posterior medial is right there, but the anterolateral uh, pap muscle is missing. And that's what we see on, these, uh, on the previous images. I'll just go back if I can. Right there. So that was a surprise. Um, I'd never seen that before um, after a tower. A uh, patient remarkably uh, was hemodynamically stable. So um, she was taken off the table. Uh, a transthoracic echocardiogram was performed next day. EF is still preserved. Um, as you can see here, we see more MR here than we did intraoperatively. But again, this patient was uh, remarkably hemodynamically stable. And at this point, uh, we decided to uh, to wait um, and see how she does. Obviously, options are redo operation or some other interventions. Uh, patient uh, actually was uh, doing very well and was discharged. Um, over the course of the year and a, uh, next year and a half, she was followed closely, and then she reported progressive uh, uh, recurrence of symptoms, which was mainly recurrence of dyspnea and exertion. And by echocardiogram, her EF was still preserved, and she now developed pulmonary hypertension with an uh, estimated RV systolic pressure of around 55 millimeters of mercury. This is the echo one and a half years later um, after the tower. See, you can see the EF is still preserved, and you can see that missing pap muscle head, which is flailing, um, as you can see on that image. TEE is performed here, and you can see torrential mitral regurgitation um, with an eccentric uh, wall-hugging jet with a very prominent coanda effect uh, on the TEE image here. Similarly, on the intracommercial view, you can see the pap muscle head sort of flailing again back and forth between the left atrium and the left ventricle, and very severe uh, torrential mitral regurgitation. I've never seen uh, more severe MR than this. So what do you do next? Do you clip this? Do you send her to surgery? Just medically manage? Or something else? Well, we had extensive discussions about this. Um, we discussed uh, with our team patient was a high surgical risk candidate, which is why she had TAVR in the first place. And we decided to uh, proceed with transcatheter uh, mitral valve repair with a mitra clip. There were reports of uh, mitra clip in cases of uh, 
post-MI uh, pap muscle rupture, but there were none in the setting of uh, post-TAVR. Um, but we thought we could give it a shot. So uh, <clears throat> transeptal uh, puncture was performed in the usual uh, setting. First clip was uh, deployed in the A2P2 location. We were able to reduce uh, the mitral regurgitation significantly, as you can see on the left panel, but there was still uh, at least uh, moderate MR lateral to the first clip. The gradient was three millimeters of mercury after the first clip. So we decided to proceed with a second clip, and uh, after two clips, um, we had mild residual mitral regurgitation, and you can see on um, this 3D image on the right, the nice tissue bridge in the center, uh, which actually uh, sort of held the uh, pap muscle head uh, in the LV and LVOT, and it's not flailing back and forth between the left atrium and the left ventricle, as you saw previously. There was no evidence of LVOT obstruction. We were pretty happy with this result, and there was a five to six millimeter gradient um, across the mitral valve. Post-procedure, uh, there were no complications. Patient did very well. She was discharged uh, post-stop day one. She was then closely followed again, one month, six months, one year, and annually. And she was last, actually last saw her uh, a couple of months ago in April. She has had no symptoms. She's physically very, very active, does her own grocery shopping, and really has not had any heart failure hospitalizations or ER visits since the mitral clip procedure. And this is her echo uh, just from a couple of months ago. Uh, the two clips are nicely seen there on the four chamber, and again, there is only mild uh, residual mitral regurgitation, and her LV uh, systolic function uh, still uh, preserved. The gradient is still about six millimeters of mercury, and there is some reduction in the um, estimated PA pressures. So again, patient is doing very well. The clip result is durable, uh, two years out, with uh, mild residual MR, stable six millimeter mercury, uh, mean gradient uh, with reduction in PA pressure, uh, preserved LVEF, and uh, no symptoms. And we published uh, this case in uh, Jack Intervention. Thank you very much. I just have to ask one question. Uh, you could see on the echo image that the papillary muscle is actually in the LVOT. Do you, what, what are your thoughts on that? And do, you, do you anticoagulate the patient? What, what's, your, what's your thinking behind that? That's a great question. We did uh, have uh, back and forth discussions about this, about the risk of uh, you know, thrombus and thromboembolism. We did anticoagulate her for about three months, but again, this is not a thrombus. It's not going to go away. Uh, patient was 82, uh, and we decided to just treat her with dual antiplatelet therapy. And uh, knock on wood, until now, she has not had any um, thromboembolic events, even though the pap muscle head can still be seen in the LVOT.